Adams was at Rikers Island today announcing progress in a violence crackdown after several inmate deaths since the beginning of the year. CBS 2's Dave Carlin has the story from inside the city jail. Look at this. This is only an example. This is an example of what they retreat. The mayor pointing out plexiglass busted out of windows and turned into knives, drugs, cigarettes, and other contraband. Rooted out of Rikers Island now that the Adams administration gave the green light for searches, as seen in these Department of Correction images, to come roaring back. More than 2,700 weapons and contraband all recovered since the end of February. Tactical search operations work, and we're going to continue to do them. Since we resumed tactical search operation in February, slashes and stabbings have declined by 63 percent. Rikers Island remains in New York City control after a federal judge saw enough progress to avoid the feds taking over. Improvements underway include covering plexiglass with metal coverings, so inmates can't get their hands on the knife-making material. About 20 percent of the windows are retrofitted. The plexiglass is behind them. It's in between. Oh, it's in between. It's in between, yeah. Staffing remains a problem at Rikers. With total workers at 7,000, the average for daily sick outs is 900. But the mayor said with this taxing and dangerous a job, having many people out injured or ill is to be expected. The job you are doing, people don't want to do. Yet you do it every day. Benny Basio is the Correction Officers Benevolent Association president. Here's what he said about the failed attempt to get more officers approved in the budget. Look, I give the mayor credit. I give credit when credit is due. He put the, the amount of officers in the budget, um, so we're grateful for that. And, you know, our fight is with the city council, and shame on them for not giving us the resources that we need to make everybody safe in our facility. He says the progress at Rikers Island, while appreciated, is just not enough. Dave Carlin, CBS 2 News. Mayor Adams did not go into any detail about the eight deaths in city jails so far this year. The Legal Aid Society responded with this statement. The extraordinarily high death rate on Mayor Adams' watch and the suffering of all who are kept in abysmal conditions inside are a humanitarian crisis that this administration seems incapable of rectifying anytime soon. The city Department of Correction officer has been fired after a man in custody on Rikers Island died. 31-year-old Elijah Muhammad died around 10.30 last night. DOC Commissioner Louis Molina says after a preliminary review of the incident, immediate action was taken, resulting in the officer's termination. The cause of Mr. Muhammad's death is now under investigation. This is the ninth death of a person in DOC custody this year. In Department of Correction custody, calling on on the mayor to close Rikers Island after yet another inmate dies in Department of Correction custody over the weekend. News 12's Marissa Marcelino has the latest. This was a gentleman <clears throat> who died in a cage on a holy day as a Muslim. We need to stop sending people there to die. The Department of Corrections says 31-year-old Elijah Muhammad died Sunday on Rikers Island after being in custody just over a month. The Kentucky native was due in court today. Advocacy group The Freedom Agenda says it's a state of emergency at the jail. If DOC can't pe keep people alive, they can't you know, um, stop the drugs from flowing in, they can't, you know, meet people's basic medical needs, then DOC shouldn't have anyone in their custody. DOC calls Muhammad the ninth death in custody, while advocates refer to it as the tenth, since one person died shortly after being granted compassionate release due to a suicide attempt earlier this year. Department of Correction Commissioner Louis Molina called the fatality heartbreaking and said that an officer had already been fired because of it. The Halt Solitary campaign calls Rikers a death trap that doesn't see people as human beings. The access to legal, mental health, substance abuse, these things should be the things that are in place. These advocates say they'll continue to fight to change the system, shut down Rikers, and say they want the mayor to work with them to come up with solutions. Today it was Elijah Muhammad, tomorrow it could be your son, your daughter, your father, your mother. 
So we need to be coming together and build a coalition to let this city and the mayor know that enough is enough and we need to be doing something right now. DOC says the incident will be reviewed further by the Department of Investigation. Marissa Marcelino, News 12. in 2014, the Sullivan County Jail has been operating under the promise that overcrowding issues would be fixed. Well, officers continue to say, though, that safety is at risk and the number of inmates continues to rise. Ashley Sharp went inside the jail herself and found out some field changes not coming fast enough. Josh, Sarah, with the highest numbers the Sullivan County Jail has ever seen, both officers and inmates are at their boiling point in a jail that's simply busting at the seams. Today, with nearly a thousand inmates, Sheriff Jeff Cassidy says the jail is in a critical state. So this is our maximum security, uh, high risk inmates. Inside the Tri-City's largest jail, those locked up are living in conditions that even the staff admits are dangerous and inhumane. Yeah, this is overcrowded at its max. The jail at its breaking point. Most cells with double the amount of inmates they're designed to hold. As you can see, there's more females in here than we have bed space for. Uh, people laying on top of each other. Hundreds forced to sleep on the floor. The overcrowding causing severe systematic issues at the jail. A huge problem, the violence. Are you noticing violent exchanges every day? Every a day. Times a week? Every day. People are going to be people. You crowd them in like sardines, there's going to be problems. For inmate James Mullins, drug charges landed him in the Sullivan County Jail, where he slept on the floor now more than a year. Jail's not supposed to be pleasant anyway. I understand that, and there's no problem with that. But it's right now, the cell I'm in, it's, it's a 16 man cell. We have 21 men sleeping on the floor. Of the seven county jail systems in the Tri-Cities, five are overcrowded, but none come close to Sullivan County. The Carter County Jail with 300 inmates and 293 beds. Washington County, Tennessee with around 650 inmates with 620 beds. Compared now to Sullivan County with well over 900 inmates with only 619 beds. That's an overcrowding issue of over 300 inmates. We're going to be decertified, and once we're decertified, we're going to have a whole lot more other issues. Sheriff Jeff Cassidy says other county sheriffs do not understand how the Sullivan County Jail is still in operation. Let's compare the Sullivan County Jail to the Knox County Jail. Knox County has a total population of three times the size of Sullivan, but they see a similar number of inmates. They also have more than twice the amount of staff and utilize a pod system, which is less labor intensive than Sullivan County's linear system. No one builds facilities like this anymore. It's so ineffective and you just can't control it the way it's set up. Fundamentally flawed. Sheriff Cassidy says the jail was outdated the day it opened in the 1980s. The sheriff's office asking the Sullivan County Commission to ultimately expand the jail, but right now just increase staffing. This will be a, a small tax burden just to, to get our staff to where it needs to be for the protection of the inmates, protection of the officers. Whereas if we don't do that, we're talking federal lawsuit that's going to cost a whole lot more money than uh, that you could ever believe. The staff at the jail drowning. That's because there's simply not enough of them. The majority of the time, two officers watching nearly 300 inmates. It's very dangerous, very dangerous job for the officers. Jail administrators say action must be taken, and if it's not taken now, it'll cost taxpayers much more in the long run with the looming threat of decertification and federal lawsuits. But at this point, there's nothing we can do. We're just kind of at the mercy of the commissioners and everybody else to try to get us some funding. With a request into the county commission for 32 more jail employees and a Knoxville architect researching how they could expand the facility, it's a waiting game for a jail that's running out of time. Now, just adding those 32 new employees would cost in total $2 million at about a five cent tax increase. And this is something that Sullivan County commissioners are torn over, some supporting it, but saying it's simply not in the budget. This is something that they will be voting on this month. In Sullivan County, Ashley Sharp, News Channel 11, in your corner. 
Other news tonight and uh, jail overcrowding continues to be a significant problem in Sullivan County. As Ashley just mentioned, uh, it has been a major issue. The jail almost lost certification in 2014 and has been operating under uh, the promise that it would be uh, at some point expanded. Now, if something does not change at the jail in the near future, uh, Sullivan County uh, officials say that they're going to have to look to other solutions. <laughs>